salvation. Is it biblical? Of course it is. Read your Bible as interpreted by experts. I think that view is headed for a deep mischief. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Hag, and with me, of course, my lovely assistant, Rob Van Hoff. What's up, my guy? How you doing? Yes. Pumped? Yeah. Let's yeah, let's go. Yeah. We've had some well, interesting videos. <laughs> no. Yes. We've had some interesting videos come in recently. Uh, some of them are usable. Some of them are not. You know, the thing is, is that sometimes things sound wackadoo, but then I like one of the things I really try to do is I try to sit back and think, okay, what's this person actually trying to say? Maybe they're not saying it well, but like, what are they actually trying to say? And if I think that what they're actually trying to say is cl like close to at least pretty close to the truth, even if it sounds wackadoo. I usually will pass just because I don't I don't want to throw people under the bus if they're actually trying to say something, but they just don't have the communication skills to say it um, or they just they're just not using the right words. I don't know. Um, anyway, so but with that said, we have had a couple. Now, we almost did a video today uh, once again on the Schofield Bible, something that we just recently did a video on. It was interesting because uh, the other video that the video that we were looking at was a uh, Tucker Carlson video. And so maybe we'll do that one next week or the week after. But uh, anyway, uh, we didn't want to do it too close when we just did the Schofield Bible, what, two weeks ago or something like that. So anyway, uh, today we get uh, a special kind of wackadoo. We, we get a special kind of weird. Um, okay, before we jump into it, if you have a video that you think is wackadoo enough for us, then send it to chegg at torresource.com, C-H-E-G-G -G at torresource.com. This is the show that we do, Mystery Bible Theater 3000, every Friday. And um, we try to keep videos under three minutes, if possible, under five for sure. If you have a video that's an hour long, please find a timestamp for us and give us the timestamp when you send the link so that we know where you want us to start and, and stop. Um, and unfortunately, just because of of, uh, you know, we have full time jobs doing things. Um, uh, we don't have, we're not going to sit and, and try to watch an hour and a half long video. Um, it's just, we just don't have time for that. Um, and then, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It really does help us. Okay, let's kick over to our other view. And now, before we get started, before we get started, I want to read the comment that she is responding to because I actually think the comment is important. This is a comment. This is the comment that she's responding to. The hunger is there, but you need to study a lot more to fully understand what these teachings mean. If you study your Bible, you'll see that that isn't. Uh, this isn't it, and I mean that with respect. Um, so that's what she's responding to. Now, there's a whole lot of condescension here in in uh, the response. Um, you can tell that this lady really thinks she knows something. Let's uh, let's take a listen. All due respect, the belief that the only way to properly understand Yeshua's teachings is to study the Bible with a literal lens is a bit of a colonizer opinion. Because the New Testament is a Hellenized take on Yeshua's teachings. Yeshua wasn't a Greek or a Roman. He was a Middle Eastern Jew. Okay, we got to stop for a few seconds. I'm not sure what that means. What does it mean that it's an Hellenized take? So once again, I think that this goes back to our discussions that we've had many times on inerrancy and uh, canon. If we truly believe that the people who w witnessed what Yeshua said, then these are just eyewitness accounts. There's no take on anything. They're not manipulating words to try to get Yeshua to say something that he's not. Right, and this is this is what I mean. Once again, this goes to inerrancy. If you just believe that the Bible is a collection of, of various um, stories, and you know people are making stuff up to make it feel however they want, okay, then you have bigger issues. But if we're going to actually take the teachings of the Lord, there's no spin. 
There's no, there is no manipulation here. <clears throat> it's what the Lord has said. It's what it's what it, it's accurate accounts of what has has gone on. Now, perhaps maybe this young lady is attempting to say that um, Paul the is the commentary, Peter, James. You know the uh, the other books, the other letters in the apostolic scriptures are attempting to frame these. But once again, <clears throat> we're going once again back to <clears throat> the issue of canonicity and inerrancy. Um, and I think that, th- that this, you know, th- this is the starting point that people have to start with. If we're not going to say that the Bible is uh, God-breathed, and then that's, that's the, the issue that we would have. That's the main issue. Um, however, this is, uh, there's more to this. Let's keep going. Hellenized take on Yeshua's teachings. Yeshua wasn't a Greek or a Roman. He was a Middle Eastern Jew. And he wasn't preaching and teaching in Greek or English. He was speaking in Aramaic. To truly understand the true meanings behind Yeshua's words, you have to understand a little bit about the Aramaic language in general. Aramaic is a very poetic and spiritual language. It's closer to Sanskrit than it is Greek or English. And this is be- Let, let's just pause for a, a few seconds here. First of all, um, these are talking points that has that she has to be regurgitating. Oh yeah, yeah. This is mind virus stuff. Yeah, exactly. That there, uh, you would need. She would need to prove that Yeshua is, con- is always speaking in Aramaic, which I don't think is provable. We've uh, talked a lot. You've written articles um, from a uh, scholarly perspective on the idea of Yeshua and his teaching in in Greek before. So Yeshua is in a Greek Hellenized culture, and he is uh, very familiar with. He does speak Greek. We know that he speaks Greek. Um, we know that he certainly speaks Aramaic as well. There's no doubt about that. And it seems as though he also uh, has a very good knowledge of Hebrew, right? He, he reads in, in the synagogue, and it seems as though the reading in the synagogue is, is certainly in Hebrew. Um, beyond that, it seems as though Yeshua would be able to, um, to converse in Hebrew. There's nothing spiritual about Aramaic. And, and this is, this is uh, you know, I think that this comes from a kind of... Um, so esoteric, mystical idea that language somehow has spirituality attached to it in some well, way. It's, shape, yeah, form. it's completely ungrounded. I mean, this right. is fairy tale. Uh, she lives in fairy tale land. Um, the w- would you think the Arameans were a spiritual people? Like the Aramaic is the language of the Arameans. Um, uh, the story of Jacob and Laban. Laban is the Aramean. And he he has phrases in Ara, in Aramaic, like uh, he called the hill Yagar Saaduta, and Jacob called it Galaid. Like Jacob uses a Hebrew term, uh, Laban uses Aramaic. Laban is not the spiritual person in that story, right? Exactly. Uh, another example is half the book of Daniel's in Aramaic, but he's in exile, and it's the language of the of the Persian king, you know, and. The Babylonian I, king, right? It, so, so you have. Are you going to say Nebuchadnezzar is spiritual because he's speaking Aramaic to Daniel? No, this is this is horrible. And po- what, poetry has nothing to do with the language. Poetry, the Bible, the Hebrew Bible is full of poetry. Um, to the yeah, it's just it, this is be, well, be, be beyond that. Beyond that, you know. Now, maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> you know, maybe. Maybe this lady is a is a Aramaic teacher at Berkeley, but I truly doubt it. I would put money, I would put money on I would I would seriously bet money that this lady has never taken an Aramaic class in her life and does not know anything about Aramaic except Can she for even write the alphabet. <clears throat> like I, I like I don't think she has I, any Aramaic literacy or Hebrew literacy or Greek literacy. She's she's coloring with giant points. crayons. She's, she's, this is like kindergarten crayon coloring. Um, like her she's hair. At, she's differentiating like a Middle Eastern Jew. Well, guess what? Greek was a major language throughout the Jewish world in the first century. It was a major language. To the, yeah. the separation of Hellenism versus Judaism is a false dichotomy. And and the right. kinds of yes. points that the kind yes. of bullet points that she's advancing are 
it's the same strategy that sectarians used to divide Jewish groups from Jewish groups in the first century, right? I mean, um, these shorthand false equivalencies listed like boom, 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 give a sense of, oh, of, oh, there's clarity here. There's like truth. There must be truth. And it's not, it's, it's not true. Um, if, if, well, she would, she's saying you don't need the Bible to understand Yeshua, right? You need to understand the spiritual Aramaic, Aramaic. language. Yeah. Well, what's the source of her? Where is she going to learn the spiritual Aramaic language? Where, where, where is she going to go learn that? Beyond that, where, from, what, what, beyond that, what Aramaic New Testament text is she attempting to read? That's what I mean. That's yeah. So is she going to go to like the Syrian church and say that they have the authority or is she going to say, oh, well, they have the words, but their church is still Hellenized, even though they're speaking Aramaic, they don't understand Yeshua because they're not teaching him the way I think he should be taught. Yeah, this is, there's other problems that this person probably has in their life that are independent of this, that where the same problem is, is, you know, showing up. Let's listen to another 30 seconds or so and see, see okay. where we get. And then uh, we'll call it a day. As the Aramaic words themselves are spiritual, they contain consciousness, and one word can have several meanings. For example, in Aramaic, the word for spirit is also the word for breath. And the duality. Well, that's Wait, the same that's in Hebrew, Greek. That's true in Greek. Yeah. That's true. And that's words have semantic ranges in every language. Every language. Yeah, exactly. Every language. So this is. This is also some illiteracy in English. Like there's there she has some need to just read more English. You know. Right. Read some English. Yeah, a, a, gra a grammar book would would do would do her very well. Yeah, like let's to keep... learn Yeah, this is this is this is sad. Okay, go ahead. Let's keep... let's keep, let's keep going. The good bad framework we see in languages like Greek or English isn't really present in Aramaic. For example, the word we translate as good really means ripe in Aramaic, and the word that we would translate as evil or corrupt is unripe. That takes on a whole different tone because Aramaic. Go ahead. <laughs> there is no unripe. There is no. That would have to be Greek. Greek, you have. You'd have. <laughs> A noun and then use the alpha privative to negate it, right? Kathartos is clean and then akathartos, right, is unclean. Um, right. Yeah, but that, but Hebrew and Aramaic don't work that way. You don't put a, there's no negating right. um, <laughs> prefix like an alpha privative as there is in Greek. And no, bisha in Aramaic means evil. There's good and evil, right? right. I mean, it, um, the knowledge of good what, and evil, like that's a what, biblical thing. It doesn't matter what language you're, talking about it in and she needs she doesn't understand the theology the significance of of you know theological significance of pentecost that people were hearing the glory and praises of god in their own language in their own language right yeah that means that means the meaning is independent of the very of, of the, the language specific language the spirituality of the content had to do with the holy spirit in the heart not the very specific good point. language everybody didn't start understanding aramaic Everybody didn't start understanding Hebrew. They heard in their own language of the land that they came from, which means they have a message that they can go back and convey in their own language. This lady is so ungrounded, like like so ungrounded. Um, I hope that I hope she starts to discern truth and and pursues it and, and you know and puts aside yeah. clinging to false ideas for the sake of flash or the for the sake of clicks or whatever it is sensationalism um but yeah a word a word in of itself being conscious is idiotic paul right. says the torah is spiritual right the law is spiritual okay that's it, he didn't say that any this particular word has consciousness and that gets into that letter mysticism that I think you alluded to earlier, some kind of like Kabbalism and, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's, that's awful. It's, I, it's I sad. Mean, here's the thing is that recently we've, we've been getting some, some comments on our YouTube videos and you know, th th this is great to, to get comments. We've had a couple of people who have written 
very long, and I do mean very, very long uh, comments. Things that would probably be better as a blog post than as a comment in a, on a YouTube video. But what these people, and it's not just one, it's been, it's been several, really long comments. And what they've tried to do is they've tried to make arguments for various different theological topics. And what they've done is they've, uh, you know, they've pulled from a couple of different ideas and then they really try to make their case. Just like this lady, it, there is an, there's an air of, I know more than everybody else. And I'm going to share my knowledge. But beyond that, it, it what they've done is they've really put up a case for the fact that they really don't know anything about the subject of what they're talking about. Oh, and oh, so yeah. well, to frame to frame the evangelists or Paul as as Hellenistic or Greek Hellenistic colonizers. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Paul Paul was Paul was the most advanced Jewish educated right. probably in terms of the rigors of of the Pharisaic tradition and, and Torah study, you know, of the day, Paul, of all the writers of the new Testament, he would be at the top of that list. But are you going to say Matthew and Mark and Luke and John are all Hellenized colonizers who are not Middle Eastern Jews? <laughs> well, I, I guess, they, I guess Yeshua's my point... own brothers, Jude and, and right. Jacob or James, are they somehow Hellenized Jewish col- or Hellenized colonizers, where G- where Jesus himself is a Middle Eastern Jew, it's so it's so bad, and this is this is why Paul says we have every thought we have to take captive to obedience to Messiah. Why does that mean? It's because our heart, the human heart, like Jeremiah the prophet says, is twisted and corrupt. You can take a, a thought and paint a picture around it and be all zealous and wired up for the wrong thing, for a lie. Yeah. Z- zeal without real. knowledge. You'll feel zeal righteous. You'll feel like you're in the right and you've got zeal and purpose and and a and an urgent cause to fight for. And you'll be exactly wrong, you know. Um and so I hope that this uh person finds peace and grace that only comes from God and and discernment of truth and and can start to sort through this and that she gets her her stuff in order you know because this is messy this is so bad I don't know who if if she's just imbibing stuff off the internet or if she actually she has, has to be she teachers, has to be she has they, personal they, teachers that are feeding her this stuff but no, this, this is, is false the, teaching the, the, it is this reeks of unhealthy. this reeks of Google searches this reeks of Google searches. Anyway, all and right, it's let's like call it there. Who are, this is the seat of scoffers against the church. There, yeah. the, the, the ideas like this are people who are who hate Christians, really, right. because they're gonna they're they try to nibble and try to um, undermine. They try to work to undermine the canon, the uh, the what we learn of Yeshua from the canonical scriptures. They they want to install like the serpent ideas that God that you don't have everything you need here. You need to go somewhere else. Um, this I wooey gooey words have quote consciousness, whatever that means. Right. And yeah. that you and yeah, it's um it's new age. It's, there's there's well, there's a lot I of I see it age. as like woke mind virus applied to attacking the church specifically. Right. All right. That's going to do it for us. We will be back next week, Lord willing, with another video. If you have a video you'd like to send to us, go ahead, chegg at torresource.com, C-H-E-G-G at torresource.com. Do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, we will be back on Wednesday with another Messiah Matters. All right. We will see you guys next video.